am looking for a job in IT industry for the post of manual tester fresher. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So any any specific reason that you are uh, going and you are changing the career direction from mechanical engineering to uh, software testing? Okay, so uh, I have a lot of, uh, I have seen a lot of opportunities in IT industry mm -hmm. and now that my uh, interest in IT industry, that's why I, I changed my mind to come in IT industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so do you know about uh, boundary value analysis technique? Uh, yes, uh, to check the boundary. Okay. So, can you give us some examples in that? Okay. So, uh, uh, there is a, okay. We we are taking an example like uh, a main character. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which uh, which uh, uh, there uh, there there are only eighteen to twenty characters. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to uh, check uh, uh, less than 18 and greater than 20 mm -hmm. and, and between the one. So there's a uh, uh, possibilities of one correct and two incorrect mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have three test cases in that situation. Okay, so you mean to say if a particular field accepts 18 to 20 characters, then you will be testing on the boundaries like 18, 17, and 20, 21, right? Yeah. Okay, that, that sounds good. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, so why, why are we uh, going for boundary value analysis technique? Is, it, uh, is there any specific reason or what is the significance of this technique? Um, I don't know about this. Okay. So let me tell you the significance of BVA or boundary value analysis. So okay. basically uh, consider a situation where a tester needs to test all these fields. Let's say there are 10 such kind of fields in a web, on a web page. And each okay. particular field has got some range. Like uh, it would accept the characters from one to 10, right? Okay. Now, if it is a manual testing job or even if it is an automation testing job, right? So it becomes very tedious to enter each and every character into that field right, starting from one to 10. Okay. So the experts, what they say that we should go for these techniques so that at least we will come to know what is the functionality, what is the behavior of the application when they are using the, when they are testing on the boundary values, using the boundary values. And see the code is generic, the code is same for all the values. Even okay. if it works for five, it should work for, if it works for, four or six, then it should work for five, right? So this is kind of a smart testing technique that I can say, and that is why it holds a significance in, you know, when you are doing testing, it would save your time. It would improve your efficiency. It would give a, you know, proper output in a less amount of time. And you will be able to catch the works. You'll be able to detect where exactly the defects are coming up and you will be able to collaborate with the developer. You'll be able to tell them, okay, this is how uh, using this technique, I have got the defect at this boundary level. So please go and fix it. Okay. So this makes things go smooth and fast. Okay. So that is why this boundary value analysis technique we are using. Okay. So what do you mean by validation testing? Okay. Validation testing is, uh, we can call as dynamic testing also. Wonderful. So in, in this testing, we are the uh, execute the test plan and test cases. Mm -hmm. So it is totally based upon testing only. Okay. Yeah. So what are the types of validation testing that you can do? Okay, so uh, there are functional testing, mm -hmm. integration testing, mm -hmm. system testing, or user, user acceptance testing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when anyone asks you about validation testing, so you can tell that we are actually validating, we are actually testing the product, right? Yeah. Or in that, there are two types of validation testing that you will be performing. One is the functional testing, right? And that, as you mentioned rightly, it was unit testing, it includes integration testing. Then you have to cover non-functional testing as well, right? Yeah. Like performance testing is there, pen testing is there, security testing. Okay, right. 
so G, again gy will come in functional rest so, so yeah so these are basically two types of you know validation testing one is functional testing and another is non functional testing again the there is a segregation of again in functional testing we have got its own types again in non functional testing it has got its own types okay then uh, can you tell us a uh, few of the test scenarios for uh, whatsapp group so you are having a group in a whatsapp right and you are asked to test the whatsapp group so what are all, all the test cases that are coming into your mind okay first of all uh, main thing hai to uh, share as if we are creating a group or not okay mm -hmm. okay then uh, uh, second uh, we can add uh, members into group or not okay mm -hmm. uh, Uh, we can uh, remove the uh, added person. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can uh, send a message in group mm -hmm. or uh, audio or video. Right. Any image uh, we test. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then we can uh, we can delete uh, that uh, message if uh, if uh, uh, we send. into the group mm -hmm. we can uh, delete a group mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. you are going good yeah yeah add some more test cases more scenarios that will come uh, to your mind how many person we are adding in the in uh, in that particular group mm -hmm. So what over here we can add is that uh, let's say if some person has left, some participant has left the group, right? Then you won't be able to add that participant immediately to the group, right? There will be restriction that has been come up from the WhatsApp feature that uh, once the participant has left the group, then you can add them only after some time because it will show you the message that this participant has recently left the group. I'm not telling the exact message, but this kind of message will come, right? second most important test case that is like only a group admin should be able to add a particular person into the whatsapp group right so over here you can cover a kind of a, you know authorization test case that uh, someone is authorized to do some functionality right some if any other participant is there they won't be able to add any other xyz participant into that group another foremost important test case would be that uh, you can keep a fun you can check the feature whether only group admins can send the messages on the whatsapp group yeah. right so when another person who is not a group admin when they are opening the whatsapp group into their mobile phone android or ios then it would be displayed a message like you are not authorized to put some messages or something like that okay so this authorization test cases you can cover another thing is uh, you can put the group info into the whatsapp group right what is the group info in that so these are few of the test cases that you would tell but you covered most of them and i would say it is a good that you are having you are able to analyze that situation on the fly because in the interviews these real life scenarios test cases would be asked to you okay now as we covered for whatsapp anyone can ask you for telegram so similar kind of a things would be there 